it's uh, you've not got your exiles, but it's a strong team you've been able to name. Uh, just talk us through it and what you hope to see from this 23 against Australia. Yeah, obviously you want to see a, a very good performance because that's what will be required to beat one of the top teams in the world. Uh, you want to see what you've been working over the last two weeks because a lot of that group were in last week. Um, we had 40 uh, this this week and players that are on, on the bench um, coming back in this week. But the la that last week did give us a chance to embed our principles, our game plan, uh, and the players have, have trained with real energy this week. You get a very good recent record against Australia in the last three. You've you've won. Are you able to put your finger on on why that is? No, um, they're they're all different games, different coaches as well. Opposition, um, I've I've came across with. Uh, I think last last year's game is the most relevant. Uh, same coaching staff. It was a it was a very tight game. They played well. They came off the back of beating South Africa. I think on two occasions, and um, before they played us, they beat South Africa this summer. So it's it's a it's a quality team, and it'll be a big test for us. Um, but we we. We have some continuity from the tour, even though we're not able to, to select players that are playing outside of Scotland. A lot of this 15 and 23 were, were involved in the Argentina tests. You mentioned Australia there. What are you expecting from them? They've obviously got Michael Hooper back, who's a, a huge presence for them. But what, what are you expecting? What have you made of them recently? They, they play really good attacking rugby. They've, they've got some individual... Um, threats throughout the team but also they've got a philosophy of, of moving the ball Dave, we, we know Dave really well um, Dave Rennie, their, their head coach he's always had this attacking philosophy uh, their set piece has improved a huge amount um, they've they've based a lot of it on, on the success that the Brumbies had around the line at Mall uh, and line at Mall defence uh, and they're, they're an aggressive team they'll, they'll look to, to compete hard at the breakdown um, they bring back Michael Hooper uh, straight into the team after after not being involved in a, a few of their games in the summer, which shows really they want to go after our breakdown, try and win the ball back off us. How important is it, Gregor, to get this series off to a positive start? The Six Nations obviously didn't quite go the way you would have wanted. Very tight summer series that you just came out the wrong side of. How important to get up and running, ideally with a win, just to set the tone for the next few weeks? Yeah, that look, that's the aim. We, we know that... Playing for Scotland is, is about inspiring our nation and the best way to do that is winning games. Uh, we've got four games at home, we've got a lot of home games coming up over the next 12 months. Uh, so the energy we'll get off, off the crowd by playing well will can drive us through to, to have, have success over the next few weeks. With a few of your players, with so few caps, Ollie Smith's uh, few players hoping to come on and make their debuts. How much of that is a statement of intent, especially not just Six Nations ahead but World Cup year next year? Well, players have earned their, their their starting places or on the bench from what, what they've done either in the start of this season or on tour. Ollie was outstanding on tour. Uh, he played really well in his, his debut uh, and challenging circumstances away from home in front of 40,000, 50,000 Argentine fans and uh, he was very good that day. So we're glad that he's back available. He'd missed the first two or three games with injury uh, and he's, he's trained well this week. It is. It's a big occasion when you when you get to play at at, at Murrayfield, um, even bigger than than winning your first cap. You're actually first home game. So great to have Ollie uh, and the likes of of Glenn Young now in our squad that they get to experience that. With the fact that Dave Rennie is under pressure in terms of his win record, Australia have been told that they've lost their fear factor on the world stage. They're not maybe the threat that they used to be. The Southern Hemisphere side. Are you? concerned about the Australian force that might come this way on Saturday and try to prove a point about dominance in the Northern Hemisphere? Yeah, well, we're, con we're concerned and aware of, of the strengths that Australia bring. I was at Melbourne about a month ago watching them play New Zealand and they, they lost in the last seconds of that game. They had a brilliant comeback. They scored over 30 points uh, against New Zealand. They'd beaten South Africa. They'd, they'd won uh, away against Argentina. So although they, they probably not won as many games as they'd like, they, they've shown their quality enough times this summer to to be positive about their, their Northern Hemisphere tour. And given that you've only been able to select players based here in Scotland, how much are you hoping that this shows the proof of what the Scottish rugby system is producing on home turf? Yeah, I think I think it, it can do that. That's, that's a really good point. We 
we are limited to, to players from Edinburgh and Glasgow, but we've got some some real quality throughout both those squads. Uh, some players that played last year in our game against Tonga that, that had won their first caps a few in that game and then became regular players for us throughout the season. So there's not as many uncapped players in our squad, uh, but there's, there's, there's some top players that have played for us before or players we have high hopes for over the next 12 months. How big a blow is it to lose Scott? Yeah, it is a blow. It's a real blow for him. He uh, he'd, he'd played obviously very well for Glasgow. He had a great tour. He'd been a, he'd picked up an injury just before the Six Nations to pick up an injury just before the the autumn series. Um, I know is is so disappointing for him. Just in training yesterday as well. So he'll bounce back. He bounced back really well to have a to have a very good summer tour, and I'm sure he'll bounce back and recover, and be available for us in the Six Nations. Focus on Jack Dempsey. How's he feeling about possibly making his debut against Australia? Uh, good, I believe he's trained well. Um, there's a lot of information to to take on board when you're you're new to a team. Um, he wasn't here last week, so he, he was in South Africa with, with the Glasgow players. So there's quite a lot to take in. Uh, trainings can be a real energetic and high pace. Um, given the, the players that we have and the, the squad we had this week. So he, he's had to adapt to that, but, but he's adapted well. He, we believe he's got the game that can really thrive for us. He's already proved that he's got the game that can thrive at, uh, at international level, and he's played very well for Glasgow, um, and we just want to see his strengths out in the field when he comes on. Players play against the former clubs all the time, but is it a strange situation at international level for a, a guy like that to potentially be playing against his old nation? It's it's obviously new that this law only came into to play really this summer. Um, and we've seen some players uh, move from country to country. I think um, Tonga had three or four in the, in, the, in the summer tests. We we have lots of players that come from different backgrounds. Um, some that have been brought up elsewhere, played age group rugby, came close to playing for international teams, but have committed to Scotland. Others that have been brought up in Scotland. Um, and some that have, have qualified in residency. So uh, Jack is part of that inclusive group that we have, diverse group that we have, and he's committed to us. So we, we, we can't wait to see how he does for us. You mentioned Gregor last week that you wanted to see form and consistency from Finn Russell. What did you make of his performance for Racing? And is there a scenario whereby he might still be able to play his way back into the squad in this autumn? Yes, of course. The door is not closed on on any player. Um, there's opportunities that come through injury, um, as as Glenn Young has is, is, is grabbed this week. And while that's unfortunate for the players that get injured, it's it's a it's always an opportunity for someone outside the squad. Um, and there could there could be other things, whether it's former players within the squad or former players over the over this period for the clubs. So yeah, there's the door is open to to all our players. In terms of Blair, you and Mike at Edinburgh have obviously put a lot of faith in him as a 10. We've seen him at various points tearing it up for Edinburgh at 10. What is it you're asking of him now in a Scotland jersey? Is it carrying that form into the, the, the test arena? Is it as simple as that? Yes. Uh, you, you, get, you get obviously get a feel for what a player's doing um, week in, week out for their club, but also how they're, how they're training. Uh, we spent a lot of time with Blair last season uh, during the Six Nations, during the the summer tour, and, and obviously in November he started at 10 against against Tonga. And it's those daily behaviours, daily actions, where he's accurate with his decisions, accurate with his skill execution, but also leading the team in terms of this is what we need to do now. And he's grown more and more into that role. I know Edinburgh takes a, takes a, a massive lead in their attack, and that's what we're looking for him to do with us. He's quite relaxed and silly whenever he's at Edinburgh, you know, and... And silly! Yeah, he can be. <laughs> In terms of, he's got a really relaxed, you know, he's still a young lad. Finn has that, you know, he's described as someone who might have made a mistake, but he will back it up later in the game and he doesn't let it get in his shoulders. I suppose, two-part of question, how much does Ali Price compliment Blair Kinghorn, and then how much does Blair cope how well does he cope when, if he makes a mistake on the international stage, can he recover quickly and get his head back in the game? Yeah, we believe so, and but it's it's not as simple as saying one person can recover from a mistake. Uh, 
it's it's a constant battle that that players have all of us have in life when we make an error do we do we dwell on it do we um does it affect our next decision so it's, it's something that we we work with our players a lot we talk about it a lot and we get the message over to the players is that the mistakes not the thing that um uh, will affect what we do as a team it's it's how you respond to it and that's something that we have we have to improve as a team and we we're working hard on it but when you're playing in that role as standoff, you're going to make more mistakes than other players in the field because you have more touches of the ball than any other player in the field and you have more decisions to make and you're not always going to get them right. You're not always going to get them right at test level because the defences are that little bit stronger. So the important thing is how you, how you learn from that um, and how you move on to the next action with no regrets and be, and be positive. And with Ali, is he the best partnership then already at test level? Are they showing that in training? They've trained well. Uh, George George too has um has trained well. Uh, Ali played with Blair in the summer. George Horn and Ben White were also on the on the tour. So yeah, look, we back all our nines to to do their jobs, which is giving the best ball to our tens to make lives easier for them to to connect at those moments when you get a break to be able to ch to chat and say right, what do we do next? Um, and they they all seem to be connecting well.